especially for you guys. Uh, and um, as my kids would say, that was probably cringy. But uh, I just thought I'd do a dedication to uh, all my subs that uh, watched me so far. I've been getting a lot of great messages coming through guys and even emails from people thanking me for the help that I've given them of the immigration video. So, so today's topic guys is a topic which is uh, something that people do not really think about when they immigrate. But I think it's important to think about this subject if you are immigrating. The subject of today is will your relationship survive an immigration? Guys, I think uh, Christmas is over so it's time for the ad to go. So today's subject is simply relationships guys and uh, the whole move having to move over to New Zealand or any country that you're immigrating to and what strains that will put on your relationship. If you are married or even if you are just uh, in a relationship, you are just dating or if you're engaged, it's always a relationship that gets put through the same challenges and it's these challenges that I want to discuss today. Hold on, I forgot about my cat. So yeah, coming back to uh, relationships, I think it's important to understand that, you know, at the moment the rate in New Zealand and most countries is around 50% of marriages surviving. Now, if I say 50%, that means uh, there is different races that divorce less than others. It's not for me to judge on that or even to go down that route. Who's divorcing? Um, at the end of the day, divorces happen, guys. I think the main reason being, I mean, a lot of people are younger when they get married um, and they feel that it's not really the person they wanted to be with and they rushed into it too quickly. There are many reasons for people divorcing, I'm just using some. Guys, please note I'm not an expert on uh, relationships. I think I can comment on it seeing that I have been married for 10 years now, so I think I've got one or two things to say about it. Um, and trust me, like any relationship would tell you that's over 10 years, everyone's had rocky times and there's been times that they can say we could have been divorced and we had to work through it. Immigrating is actually one of the most stressful things to do. Uh, immigrating is like moving on steroids, really. It's, um, and they say after death, moving is one of the most stressful uh, experiences to go through. And with this said, I mean, if you are in a relationship and uh, there is some cracks in that relationship, you should really just understand that there is a risk of it breaking this relationship down, having to immigrate. Now, why do I say this, guys? Well, the, the problem is, as we know that, like I say, statistics tell us that actually a lot of relationships break up due to immigration. Uh, the big stress that it puts on that uh, relationship really tests the relationship. And what do I mean by test the relationship? Well, people are at different stages of their relationships. Some people have stronger relationships than others. Some have, some have more cracks in it. And sometimes the excitement of immigrating basically moves the focus off of the relationship and it actually re reunites those two people. But just for that while, till they've immigrated, then the, the cracks in the relationships is obviously going to come out again. And this is the challenge then for people to actually stay together. So maybe I'm trying too hard to explain this, uh, you know, like this uh, face to face. Let me try and explain it with uh, illustration. Just to... Right guys, so the first thing to show you is you've got basically a guy and you got a girl. They love each other, so there is love. And they put a ring on it. Now, a lot of people get married within Christian faith and some people in other faiths, but for the, the purpose of this, they get married within Christian faith, so there should be a layer of faith. And this is the point I'll get to a bit later, guys, where I think this is missing sometimes. There should be a layer of faith. You got married within the constitution of marriage, which is a Christian uh, arrangement. For the purpose of this illustration, I'm showing uh, someone that got married and that had children. So I'm not using people that's still dating, that's just in a relationship, or people that are engaged. So the next one that you'll have will be children. 
So there will now be children in the mix. Okay guys, then there's all the other layers which will be the following. It will be stuff like your security, which is your house, uh, finances, which carries the family. Then you'll have another layer right around here. That will be friends, family. Now guys, what I'm trying to explain here is a lot of relationships starts having some cracks. So the love starts showing some cracks. The cracks meaning the person realizes that in certain circumstances the other partner is not showing the love they expected from that partner. Now as these cracks show, you might say, okay, but maybe this, this uh, couple want to break up or this, they want to break up this marriage. But unfortunately, there's this one thing called children, which makes it not as easy for them. For them. And sorry, let me say it's not unfortunate, it's actually fortunate. Then what also happens with all these cracks in the relationship, these people start relying on things like family, the wife might be relying on family for support. The husband might be relying on friends for support. They support them and convince them to stay together. Uh, there might be some finances that the family is helping with. So the family is helping with finances. If there's financial problems in the relationship. Um, there might be many different reasons why these cracks that's coming into the relationship are being filled by family and everyone else. So the relationship keeps going for the sake of the children and the family and everyone supporting to keep this relationship going. Now guys, the question of this illustration is, if the relationship is in this state, you should not immigrate guys. Why am I saying this? Well, if you think about it guys, there's so many cracks and maybe this relationship is being kept together because of all the support system support systems being friends and family keeping this whole set up together but what happens if you have to immigrate let's see immigration guys will do the following so this is immigration there goes your family there goes your security which is your house your car everything else there goes a lot of the finances because you're starting over in a new country. And here you're going with your family, flying far across to a little island called New Zealand. The problem now is those cracks that was being filled by all your support systems can no longer go on. And what happens is it basically gets exposed. So what happens now, it's so much more difficult because those children are not enough to carry this relationship. And what will happen is eventually a divorce will happen because the support systems are no longer there to carry this relationship. And that is why people that immigrate divorce. Well guys, you will ask, hold on, but why did you leave the layer of faith in there? Well, this is one of the biggest problems with young people getting married. And this is what uh, I experienced personally, and that's why I can say I am still married, is that faith is the one thing that you need to strengthen. Because faith is really the institute of marriage with God, or whichever relationship you want to marry in, so guys, uh, if you think what I've just illustrated is a bunch of garbage, that's fine. Um, if you feel that maybe uh, you've had a totally different experience, that's also fine because that is all true, guys. I'm just taking my situation and I had to get my foundations with my faith right for my relationship to flourish. And I can tell you today that the road that I've walked and where my relationship is, it's always being tested and you can never get comfortable and say, oh, my relationship's solid. Um, it's in my opinion, all on the grace of God. And, and you've got to constantly work at your relationship and you always got to humble yourself and realize 
that a relationship is based on uh, sacrifice and giving. Guys, we've just celebrated Christmas uh, based on a Christian tradition. And what does it say? It always says giving and caring. And that is really being selfless is what a relationship's all about. Peeling away all these layers will really only leave you with your, your, your core foundations of your relationship, whatever that may be. And it's going to expose the cracks. And if there's children involved, it's going to even be harder for children if you have to divorce in another country. You really got to take a deep dive, look at your own relationship, ask those questions. Will my relationship survive? Because I have seen a lot of cases. Children also, you know, bears the brunt of it. Uh, the, people are strong, they'll survive, they'll grow out of it. But what you can avoid, you want to try and avoid. Guys, then going into friend relationships, as you see there, saw there with my illustration, I totally removed friends because that's basically, you're very lucky if, if, you, if you moved over with friends. You might find one or two friends here, but often it wasn't your closest friends. People are very lucky if they're here with their closest friends in New Zealand. So you start over. There's two ways to go about it when it comes to, when it comes to friends. So the one way of going about is actively looking for friends and being quite aggressive. There are so many, many different places, guys, these days where you can find friends in New Zealand. You've got a whole lot of groups. I'll put a link below on one of my other videos um, where I'm showing the kind of videos you should watch when you want to immigrate and the kind of groups you have to join on Facebook. So you can have a look at that video, but it's simple. It's really going to all the South Africans immigrating to New Zealand groups. Being on these groups, there's always get togethers. There's always people looking for friends. If you're really willing to put yourself out there, um, you can definitely find a lot of friends uh, moving to New Zealand. I can honestly tell you, me staying on the North Shore, there's certain areas all over Auckland, Howick, uh, Epsom Downs, those areas down that, that way. There's a lot of South Africans in Bucklands Beach. All these areas got a lot of South Africans. So if you're really looking for South Africans to connect with, you can. And I mean, North Shore is crazy. It's all over. We've got South Africans. But it also doesn't mean, and this is one thing that I always say, is it doesn't mean if we come from the same country and we've got the same nationality, we're going to be friends. Because it's not even to say we would have been friends back home. So... For me, I believe you should give everyone a chance and then you should give relationships time to grow. Now it's very frustrating and it's, it's tough and we all have to walk this road. We don't want it to be forced, we want it to be organic so it needs to grow as it would have naturally. Um, I, I have to look back at friends that I had back home and I think organically my friendships grew there and there was just certain friendships that you never expected that lasted the test of time and uh, you've gone through such ups and downs with those friends and you thought at times that it wouldn't wouldn't come right and then the friendship picks back up and you would have never known that would be your best friends and I think you can only go through those ups and downs and that whole journey in New Zealand again if you take your time and you let it happen as it should and don't try and force it and going you're going right back to where you were when you just left school where you had to and you were just newly married and you're trying to look for the right couples the right fit and the right kind of friends and it takes time and time and years and sometimes some of your best friends are your family which you do not have yet you know because your family knows you you know through all the ups and downs they know you much better because they've known you since you've been a kid think of those friendships that you've built that's not family after school and how long they took before they were really strong. <laughs> then you got to think of, of uh, New Zealand being exactly the same situation. You lose your, your grannies, your granddads, you lose all of that as soon as you move your children to another country. So they lose a, a big aspect of the family life and you do feel that hole the most. That is the thing that hurts the most and that's the hardest part as you've seen evident through my last vlog or so so that relationships lacking you can never just replace uh, if you could get people that's uh, older than you that can fill that role for you over time you're very privileged but i think for a lot of children they just will grow up without those older father figures 
which I think is important for young people to have, but you will have to play that part as the parent yourself, as you will not have those grannies and grandfathers to do that. That's with family. Finances, the same thing, guys. You might have had those close family members or people you could turn to in moments of need financially. That is not really the case here, you know, and you don't really want to be looking at anyone back in South Africa if you're in another country uh, for finances because the, the exchange rate just makes it silly to even look at that. So finances is also, it puts pressure on you. You're in a new country. Uh, it really there's so much hidden cost that you do not realize as soon as you land here and how expensive New Zealand is New Zealand is not a cheap country to live in living costs is really expensive don't get me wrong on that um, if you work wisely you can still come out okay but if you want to live the same standard of life that you lived in South Africa in entertainment wise entertainment you will pay a lot of money so guys I think in closing um, I really I want to put this in the right words I can only compare immigration to when you just leave school um, you have a new job you get your first house you get your first everything you're trying to integrate with people you're trying to make friends um, you're trying to integrate into society and you know if you look back your first couple of years out of school it's hard you got constant ups and downs and it really emotionally does test you you know and i can i can proclaim for myself that i've been emotionally very much up and down and i've not been the person that i would say i've been in south africa a friend i've maybe not been the friend that i would have been in south africa because emotionally you just go through so much uh trying to find work trying to to build up relationship understanding a different country's culture understanding a different country's systems and it's been hard you know and um, i think it's important to understand that that takes time and that i would say give each other a break so if you're in your relationship and you've just immigrated give each other a break in the sense of Go easy on each other, take it easy and give that person the space they will eventually find their true, true self and be able to really be the per best person they can be because maybe the, uh, all the stresses at the moment might make that person that they're not 100% who they should be and I think the same for friendships, you know, think of your friendships and, and give each other the space in that first, I would say year guys, it's, it's really tough on anyone immigrating and um, yeah, I think that's the only advice that I can give you um, and uh, yep, just keep that in mind. If you're immigrating emotionally, you'll be going through a lot of ro uh, roller coasters and it might affect your relationships. Push through and remember guys, for me personally, faith was the number one thing because we might change, but uh, God never changes. So guys, it's the 30th today, uh, one day to New Year's and uh, excited for a new year i think 2020 uh, is gonna bring uh, all kinds of new exciting things for me in new zealand uh, hopefully find a job which is my first mission this year and then uh, also obviously this channel that i really was surprised at what it's done and guys i'll just show you the statistics here how this channel has grown i mean um i'm very blessed at the way my my uh, subscriber base is growing but I do still find guys that a lot of people that's on my uh, that my subscribers seem to be watching my videos and I really thank you guys for that but everyone else uh, seems to be watching this video but not subscribing guys now the challenge I sit with is if you look at my statistics yeah I'm it's a very low percentage of people that actually uh, subscribe that actually watch my content that subscribe so guys what I want to ask you of this video is if you watch this video now um, if you are a subscriber firstly please share this video with friends Fr share it onto your facebook pages everywhere uh, so that i can get more subscribers and everyone else watching that's not a subscriber please subscribe to this video i mean if surely if you're watching this you're looking to immigrate and you're enjoying my content so why not just uh, subscribe and then you'll see all my my future videos as well because it's so natural for people to just want to skip this part and not subscribe so subscribe and then what i will do guys is on my thousand subscriber mark i'm going to actually give someone a opportunity to be on one of my videos on a live stream 
to give their experience experience how it was for them to immigrate and how it was for them the challenges that they went through um, I will put one of these people that's one of my subscribers on my on one of my videos for them to basically give us their side of the story if you want to know more about New Zealand or if you plan on immigrating here uh, or just generally wanting to understand more about immigration I definitely think you will enjoy this to help me to hit the subscriber mark because I'm trying to hit this before the new year that means i've got only a couple of hours left guys and um, i know you can do that for me uh, if everyone that watches this video now if i get 400 views and i can get 400 subscribers which will never happen but if i had to get that that would be awesome and that would get me over the line of the thousand subscribers mark over the new year which would be amazing So there's a big difference in price between South Africa's McDonald's and New Zealand's McDonald's. So